Goff, leader of the Labour Party, with us this morning. Good morning to you, Phil. G'day, Wemo. And, Great uh, night last night. Yeah. I wonder I can still speak. <laughs> did, you, did you get any sleep at all? Well, I went along to the game with my wife, and we uh, both uh, really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, no, yelled our heads off, and uh, a good, you know, I think it was a pretty emphatic victory. Um, and uh, Corey Jane all, all, Jane, all credit to him. Gee, the way that he, he just picked up that high ball so cleanly. My, my only disappointment was this. Uh, through the match, I've been saying, when are they going to bring Sonny Bill on? Yeah. When are they going to bring him on? <laughs> he was on for four and a half minutes, and he was off He's again, gone, yellow really? guarded. But yeah. uh, there you go. Uh, no, good win. And, and you know, look, uh, I watched the French there on, uh, on Saturday night. Uh, look, barring a miracle... Uh, there is uh, there is no way that the French side is going to be a match to the All Blacks. We'll finally bring it home after 24 years. Mark my words. You, I, you're I, not jinxing this on Radio Wamo. Yeah, yeah, you're not jinxing this. No, no, you just got to be careful of that. Uh, look, I, no, I, I think uh, they they played so professionally and and well. Uh, I think mm. there's a consistency there with the All Blacks. They'll be they'll be absolutely geared up for uh, uh, for next Sunday night. And the French, well, you know, they say they've got two teams. They're both the same players. But one, one plays a very ordinary game mm. and the other a slightly better game. Uh, uh, I, I, think, uh, I think we'll bring the cup home. Because I tell you what, if we don't, it'll be like heavy oil flying through the streets of New Zealand. Uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be, it won't be an environmental disaster. It'll be a national catastrophe. It, w- it would, wouldn't <laughs> it? Uh, let's, talk about the, let's talk about the arena. Um, things have moved on well on from last time we talked um, Last week, in fact, um, you were spotted out on the beach, which is something that you said you weren't going to do with a spade and, and buckets. Yeah, no, no, I, uh, I ended up there. I, I came down on the Papamoa Domain, and we wanted to walk along the beach and talk to some of the volunteers and the army guys that were helping out. So I fronted up to the first group, and they were they were, they were pretty angry about the, the lack of response, actually. But I got to talking to them, and they said, well, Phil, you're here. Here's the shovel. Get mm. into it. <laughs> So I thought, oh well, I am here. Um, let, let's let's give them a bit of a hand. Um, and uh, look, all all credit to the volunteers. I was uh, back there on Saturday. Went down to Makatu, and just watched the volunteers wor- working along uh, through the rocks and the estuary there. Mm, that's the hard bit. Yeah. Oh, that that is the hard bit. But they've taken the initiative themselves. What the government hasn't done, they've picked up themselves. They they organised for a boom to be put out there. The boom. Uh, it's not perfect, but it, but it's stopping some of the oil. Secondly, they they got in touch with a guy who makes uh, who imports sphagnum moss, mm. and they're using the moss to clean the oil up. They're there. They've got it organised. It's their beach, and the thing that really hacked them off, frankly, was that you know the authorities were were trying to say, hey, no, keep away from the beach, leave it to the experts. Well, bugger it, this is their beach and they're doing a really good job. So all credit to the hundreds and hundreds of volunteers that are out there mm. working. And another thing, um, since last week, last, last time we chatted, I, I asked you if um, Labour was keen to put a moratorium in place on uh, deep-sea oil drilling. Um, you said no this time last week. Now your time no, no, has what changed? I said, actually, I said the same thing on both your programme and, uh, and on TV3, but you gave me different interpretations of it, clearly. Uh, I said that but, you know, I'm not against... Uh, offshore, offshore oil uh, prospecting, uh, but it, there has to be safeguards. Our environment is more important than the royalties that we get from it, and unless they can put the safeguards in place, then the oil drilling should not commence. So that's not the same as a moratorium? Well, it's, um, it's, it's, a moratorium says that we're going to stop it for a period of time. I'm saying it in a slightly different way. You don't drill for oil offshore with the potential catastrophes that can occur unless the safeguards are in place first and you have confidence in them. So what you've said last week has been wrongly reported because the word moratorium has been used in news articles regarding what you said. I didn't use the word moratorium on TV3, you might have noticed. I said, but you know, look, we're probably splitting hairs. Um, it, It adds up to the same thing. Unless you can provide absolute guarantees about safety and contingency plans for clean-up, we're not going to take the chance. Mm. Uh, and, and, and why am I even more emphatic about that now? Because having seen the government's failure to respond effectively to a limited spill from a container ship which has 1,700 tonnes on board, how could you be confident that if you were drilling and something went wrong, like in the Gulf of Mexico, and you had hundreds and hundreds of thousands of tonnes pouring into the ocean, that they could do something about it. I don't believe they can.
Well, one thing we should have done, I suppose, was um, was signed the um, international convention that would have protected taxpayers by an additional twelve million dollars for the clean up of the Rena oil spill. Now, this this problem with this some um, convention went back into the time that Labor was in government, right? No, no, yeah, it, it did, um, and let's get it absolutely right. The International Maritime uh, Convention, the Bunker Oil Convention, came into effect in 2008. In August 2000, at the end of August 2008, the Transport and Industrial Relations Committee reported uh, on its examination of that convention mm-hmm. and said we should adopt it. In the report to Stephen Joyce when he first became Minister... Yeah, bang on, now, there's a few months between there and the election... <laughs> Yeah, you, you, the, the, the committee reports back, so you're into September. The election was in uh, Octo- no, no, November the 8th. There was eight weeks. You weren't going to draft legislation in eight weeks, mm. mate. But these guys were told on becoming government in their briefing papers as incoming ministers that they should do it. For three years, they've sat on their bloody thumb. They've done nothing, and that would have provided us with the, a much stronger protection that the companies, the shipping companies responsible for this, would meet the tab, not the Tauranga businesses and you and I as taxpayers. And Stephen Joyce hasn't explained why in three years he did nothing. Mm. I can tell you why in eight weeks we didn't get it drafted. It takes longer than eight weeks. Mm. But they said in the briefing paper to Joyce that that should be introduced in 2009. Mm. It's now at the end of 2011. He did nothing and he's got no justification for that. I mean, would it be fair to say that there's a, a, probably a lot of legislation that's on the back burner that's of the equivalent sort of nature that doesn't really come into play unless something out of the blue like this happens? No, the, the, uh, the, the Select Committee was quite adamant about it, and Morris Williamson and Kate Wilkinson, you know, uh, two Cabinet Ministers, sat on that committee. They knew the urgency of it. They knew that it could be done. It was relatively straightforward. The committee reported on all the advantages that this would mean that the companies could be held responsible for economic loss and clean-up. Uh, there was no disadvantage to do it. There was no controversy about uh, whether or not we should do it. They just preferred to do the, the political stuff that, that has no real importance. Mm. You know, all of the, the stuff on three st- and the rest of it, uh, they didn't do what was really important. Mm. OK, hey, finally, um, your um, the Labour Party um, communications and IT policy is being released today. What's the guts of it? Well, I can't pre-release it. Um, well, it's, it, out, it's out on the web. Clear Curran's already it? put okay. it out there on well, Red Alert. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, you should uh, you should you should uh, talk to Claire about that. She's the she's the expert on it, and she'd be delighted to come on your program, Wemo. All right, okay, <laughs> fair enough. Thanks very much, Phil. Good on you, mate. Cheers. See ya. See you later. Leader of Labor Party, um, Phil Goff here with us. So no, Labor has released um, the IT policy this morning. It's up on the blog.labor.org.nz. Claire Curran's been blogging about it. She's been up early this morning. Don't know if she was watching the rugby because she was unless she's been done a done an all nighter. Five five twenty a.m. She posted that. Um, it is, yes, now 10 minutes away from 8. Got a track here from T54.